Well, my dad, uh, at the beginning of World War II, uh, lived in Macon, Georgia. He was a member of the 121st Regiment, which is a local National Guard unit. Uh, now, the first 121st, that was the, they were called the Gray Bonnets. It was a, basically sent around Macon. In fact, uh, this, is their, this is their logo. This is the Gray Bonnet logo that they wore. Uh, but they joined with the 8th Division and, and were uh, taken over to England to get ready for the Normandy invasion. And at that time, the 1st Division, the Big Red One, had uh, finished up with, uh, gosh, they had served in Africa and Sicily. They were very uh, much veterans in this uh, in the scheme of, of landings, and so uh, they needed replacement soldiers. So uh, my dad's company actually was moved to the 1st Division. Of course, the 1st Division, uh, uh, when they went over for Normandy, they landed on uh, Omaha Beach, which uh, uh, I think is known as probably the, the toughest landing zone, the bloodiest beach. Things were so messed up. Uh, there was so much smoke they couldn't see who was supposed to be where. Landing craft landed miles away from where they were supposed to be at different times. Uh, when he went into the water about 8.20, uh, they were basically not that far behind the first wave. The captain of his company, the company clerk, were killed as they were trying to get off the landing craft. And a lot of the soldiers were having a hard time with all that weight making it up onto the beach. Uh, they had about 150 yards or so of sand to try to get to some shelter, and they just could not, uh, they, they couldn't get up the beach. A lot of them were stranded out in, in the ocean. So uh, my father and, and some of his uh, uh, guys that were, uh, that were actually hiding behind some of these, uh, uh, they were in shape of crosses, these big steel uh, crosses that the Germans had put out on the beach to keep the landing craft from, from actually landing in high tide. So they were behind them and they uh, were taking their life belts and tying them together and were trying to float them out into the water so they could help pull in these guys that just couldn't make it in. He had his back turned to the beach while he was doing that and a shell went off behind him and that's when he was wounded. Uh, shrapnel got him uh, across his back, lower back. After a couple of days, he was uh, evacuated back to England, uh, had surgery. Uh, went through recovery and they, they, when he was able to, they went back and rejoined his outfit uh, just in time for the Battle of the Bulge, which is, um, if you know the story, a German counterattack uh, in Belgium and uh, we were unprepared for it. It was uh, in December, right around Christmas time. Uh, his job at that point was to grab every cook and baker and musician and whoever he could find and teach them how to shoot a rifle and half a day or less and then send them on up to the front. So um, all of these stories that I'm telling you, I knew nothing about growing up. He did not uh, talk about his experiences in the military. They're called the greatest generation and I'm sure, you know, for one of the reasons is that's because of uh, so many of the things that happened during that time period. My name is Woody Leonard. I'm carrying the load for Woodrow Wilson Leonard Sr., my father his friends, his relatives, his brothers in arms from World War II. Who are you carrying?